Hey gardeners, Amy here with Garden Up. Today I want to talk about this really cool weed right here. I call it Western Salsify. Its scientific name is Trigopogon dubious. So this little bugger here, um, a lot of people call it milkweed because it does have a milky sap. But this is not milkweed. Again, this is Western Salsify, or there's actually several uh, different Salsifies. I, I'm not positive if this is in the species dubious, but uh, I'm pretty sure it is. I had no idea how many different species there were until I started researching for this video. But Salsify is in the uh, genus Tragopogon in the family Asteraceae, which is the sunflower or aster family. And it's in that family because this was open this morning and I was super excited about it. It's in that family because this isn't one flower. It's actually hundreds of flowers assembled in a flower head. There are what's called ray flowers and disc flowers. The ray flowers are underneath at the base of what we call a petal. Each petal is its own flower. And the disc flowers are what make up the center. So whenever you think of a daisy or an echinacea or a sunflower, you know there's a center and then there's the petals. But those are actually not one flower. It's one big composite head of hundreds of flowers. That's Asteraceae, and it's one of the biggest plant families in the world. So there's a little bit of trivia on that. This plant is in that family, and if you see an open flower, you'll see why. It looks just like a big dandelion mixed with a sunflower. The seeds look like a big giant dandelion poof, because that's pretty much what it is. It's a big poof of flying seeds that travel on the wind and can make their own way in life and spread all over the place. Tragopogon dubious has lots of common names. Yellow salsify, western salsify, western goat's beard, wild oyster plant, yellow goat's beard, goat's beard, spelled two different ways, and common salsify, and just salsify. It's native to southern and central Europe and western Asia, and it's found as far north and west as northern France. Western salsify has been introduced into North America where it has become widespread. Like most salsifies, the western salsify grows as either an annual or occasionally as a biennial form reaching a height of typically 20 to 60 centimeters, but sometimes almost a meter high. It grows typically in warm, sheltered spots with moist soil. Its yellow flower head is four to six centimeters in diameter and is likely to be seen in late spring or early summer. Buds are blue-green, tall, and tapered. The inflorescence opens early in the morning and often closes up by late afternoon. Later, the plant forms a seed head that resembles that of the dandelions, but is distinctly larger. The seeds themselves, known as akines, are two to four centimeters long, but feather weight. I want to take just a second to talk about another species of this plant called Tragopogon myris. This one is considered native to some parts of the U.S., but it also might be a hybrid of a couple of other species of salsify. Either way, it is a weed and I don't want it in my garden, so we are going to remove it. I'm going to show you how to do that next. So this is a small salsify. This one probably just germinated this spring. If you can get them when they're small, they're super easy. It's just a little taproot. It's really not that big of a deal. You just got to get the whole thing. This one's pretty young. I have another one over here. This one's another pretty small one, probably also germinated this spring, but earlier than the other one. When I pop it up, I'm going to get a slightly larger taproot. So there's that one. That's about four inches long total. Okay, not too big of a deal. But this guy, that's going to be more of a deal. So when the salsify is young, the way I can tell this plant from a grass or and several other plants that look a lot like this is this little bit of fuzz that's down here at the base. This little bit of fuzzy stuff, it like, it rubs off the leaves and it builds up. It's a distinct thing that's always on salsifies. And then there's also the way that the leaves fold together. It looks a lot like a grass, 
but it's distinct from a grass because it's missing the um, anatomy, the anatomical parts that a grass would have in its rolled or folded um, venation. So this western salsify is growing right in the middle of the pine leaf penstemon. I could grab the base of it and pop it out, but what's more, most likely gonna happen if I do that is I'm gonna pop the top off and leave the tap root and it's just gonna be back. So I've gotta get a little bit more creative with how I take this one out. So I'm gonna start by putting my shovel a little ways away. I'm not quite sure how big the roots are on the penstemon. Yep, I hear him snapping, so I'm uh, close. Gentle pull up, don't pull hard, or you're gonna break it. There we go. Harley carrot right here. <laughs> so this one's got a bit bigger of a taproot than the other ones you saw but it's also got a lot more branching on the top. So this probably germinated last year and I missed it. And it's been spending all winter growing underground and getting nice and big so that in the spring it could shoot up this many different stems. And each one of these has a bloom on the end. They're just gorgeous. Like they're really pretty, but they're not something you want in your garden. Yeah, check on my pencil and put it back. Apparently have a chestnut tree donated by a squirrel as well. So thanks for watching this video, everybody. If you liked it, make sure to tell me by hitting the like button. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments down below. And if you haven't already done so, please subscribe for more gardening content every week. Thanks again, guys. I will see you in the garden.